When do spirits visit? Common visitation times by spirits. This is Cherokee Billy. If you've ever had someone you love cross over to the realm of spirit, you might be wondering to yourself, how come they haven't visited me yet? Or perhaps you thought you experienced, it, experienced something strange a few nights ago, and you think it was your grandmother, but maybe it was a broom falling in the closet instead. It's a close call, right? Your closet is kind of messy anyway. While the above scenario is definitely a possibility, brooms are loud after all. I'd like to share with you a secret. If you ever have a loved one who has crossed over into the spirit, they have tried to visit you. Yes, that's correct. In fact, the number one message in readings is, Hey, I've been trying to visit you, but no one has noticed. And let me tell you how this happens. While there is a common theme, theme in how they visit, there is also a common theme for when your deceased loans are visiting you. Once you identify when and how your loved ones will likely visit you, you'll be increasingly more aware and prepared for the next time your loved one wants to stop by to share with you their love and support. In order for a deceased loved one to visit you, a great deal of energy must be expended on their end. Coming down to the physical realm, shifting their energetic vibration so they can be felt, moving objects or making noise if they can, etc. Since it takes so much energy for your deceased loved ones to visit, your loved ones want to make the most of their attempts to connect with you. To make the most of their visit, your deceased loved ones have a few optimal time frames for connecting with you, sharing with you their love and support, and assisting you on your life journey would be most invaluable, accepted, and noticed. Well, the number one is obvious when you're alone. This is the number one opportunity a spirit has to visit with you is when you are alone. Your alone time is one of the only times of day when you're not distracted by other people thus more likely to notice the subtle shift in the presence of another. If your alone time is in the evenings or in the very early mornings, you might even be less distracted because you are preoccupying yourself with fewer tasks. In the evening, many of us are winding down for the day and naturally unloading all of our distractions, communications, media chores, to-do list, mental chatter. The less distractions you have, the clearer your mind is, and the more likely a deceased loved one might be able to get your attention. It's like trying to hear a very small whisper or feel a tiny quake in the earth. If you are busy, you just might miss it. Sensing a deceased loved one can range from a very subtle shift in the air around you, a coolness or a heat in the room, to a very heavy feeling like a thick blanket. Each spirit is different and has a unique signature for how they visit. While you are learning, being aware to all of these shifts is most noticeable when you're alone. This is still, this happens frequently for me. I'm usually alone and it doesn't matter what day or night, time, day or night that they come, but I am aware because I'm in a great deal of quiet and alone time. So, you know, take in mind that being around others will be very distracting. Your loved ones can be right in the middle of something you're doing with friends or out on a business, whatever, but you won't notice it because you're not so quiet. So when are most of us alone? Yep, at night. Spirits don't love night or have some sort of fascination with that time of day. Your deceased loved ones didn't become strange and want to stop by as a bump in the night. Simply this, we are more in tune with ourselves at night, less distractions, more freedom for our senses to pick up on subtle changes, feelings, sounds, or sensations, when we otherwise may have been preoccupied texting a friend. There are also times of the day when the veil between the spiritual world and the physical world is the thinnest, 
which can make it easier for you to sense spirit. Another way is when you are sleeping or dreaming. This is actually an extension of when you're alone. Even if you do share a bed with someone, usually when you are woken up from a sleep, you are doing so as the only one awake in your house. Thus, sometimes a loved one may attempt to visit you at night, especially if this is the only time you are calm and your mind is quiet. While your loved ones don't always intend to wake you up, sometimes they just like to be with you, occasionally they will. Next time you're suddenly awoken, see, feel and sense if it's a visit from a loved one. It may be the reason. Another popular time they have to visit you is during your dream time. Since those in spirit are without a body and exist in an energetic form, they can and do communicate with you through the energy of your mind, thoughts, emotions, and imagination. Often we only allow our intuitive mind the side of the right side of the brain to speak to us in our dreams without interruption. This is the side of the mind that spirit will come through to communicate with you. If you are clairaudient, they'll come through speaking as well. Time and time again your loved ones will say when I'm talking to them, tell her I talk to her on the right side. This is your creative, intuitive, imaginative side and it has the most freedom in your dreams. Thus many spirits choose to visit you during dream time. I have often heard my main, my mother and father always through my right ear. It comes through very loud, distinct. It is their voice. It is not my imagination. Another time they come to you is during a difficult time. Perhaps you're going through a rough time, a time of transition or crisis, a time or of reflection, a relationship shift, a period of release and letting go, or a time of questioning. If you lost someone who was your cushion to fall on, your comfort and support, or your shoulder to cry on, your loved one will still visit you to provide you this comfort. In fact, this is really common for grandmothers and romantic partners who are on the other side. However, if your difficult time is a period of grief, it is very difficult for, for deceased loved ones to connect with you through this emotion. In fact, they often describe grief as a heavy cloud that blocks the way for them, and until the cloud is lifted, they may be unable to pass through. On another note, if you lost someone who always knew just how to cheer you up or bring you joy, you may even attempt to visit you, continue providing this gift both to you and to others in need. Another way is during memori memorable events. Weddings, engagements, births, sports events, ceremonies, presentations, promotions, buying a house, winning in the awards, an award, releasing yourself from a bad situation, and more. These are all events that your loved ones do not want to miss. If you are concerned that your mother passed just before the birth of your child, don't be. She was there, and she wouldn't have missed it for anything. One thing you need to know is when your deceased loved ones do not visit you, worried that your loved ones on the other side are watching you change your clothes for bed, shower, or something else intimate, ask yourself, would my grandfather have watched me shower while he was alive? If the answer is no, the answer is still no. If your loved ones would not have had violated your personal privacy, they still respect and honor those boundaries. However, would you have a problem if your sister chatted while you were showering? After all, you may have shared a bathroom for years when you were growing up. In this exception, this loved one might visit you on this occasion, since it would have been to totally normal behavior for her while you are both on earth. Remember, your loved ones want to connect with you, and they are going to use the most likely methods for you to notice. Don't pay attention to your dreams so much. They may not even bother coming to you this way, and instead try to catch your attention 
when you go downstairs for a midnight snack. They always, in my personal experience with any of my deceased loved ones, have come at very unexpected moments. So that's the time to pay attention. If you would like to learn how to connect with your deceased loved ones, I can teach you different techniques and processes to help you get that connection. Contact me, Cherokee Billy. I'll be happy to teach you and help you on this amazing journey. I do teach spiritual classes worldwide through phone and the internet. I do appreciate your listening. Thank you. This is Cherokee Billy.